We have an exclusive interview tonight with Mary Hurt. She is a neighbor of Lisa's family. Uh, police, I understand, uh, checked her property for suspicious footprints. Mary, first of all, thank you for joining us tonight. I know you are here to be of service in the uh, frantic effort to find this adorable, precious, helpless child. Uh, what do you know about this man known as Jersey? Uh, police say he is not a suspect in baby Lisa's disappearance. However, um, you have some absolutely extraordinary information about what happened that night, the night the child disappeared and what you saw. Tell us. Uh, well, Jersey did handyman work for our next door neighbor that lived uh, obviously next door to us. And he was around a lot and we got to know him as an acquaintance and he, you know, talked to us on many occasions and um, our neighbor told us that the night that that baby went missing, um, the, the man who was seen coming up the street came and went on our property and through our next door neighbor's gate and up, you know, we're going up towards, there's a hill that goes up towards some townhomes that are behind us. Now, what do you know about Jersey? What are your thoughts about him? I understand that he is behind bars on a burglary charge of some sort. Um, but again, he's not considered a suspect in this case. But do you have any thoughts about him, his character, his personality? Well, he definitely was suspicious and kind of shady, I would say. He kind of just comes out of nowhere. He never is specific on where he's been or where he's going. You'd kind of see him around the neighborhood and just pop in and talk to you. He was always friendly, but he definitely let us know in the last probably week before all of this happened that he was um, wanted for an outstanding warrant that he had for his arrest, which was kind of a shock to us. So definitely. Did you ever see him with uh, the woman who was apparently at one point his girlfriend who says that she got a call from the phone that was stolen at the very same time, reportedly, purportedly, that the child was taken from the home. Yes, and I've actually spoken to her as well. Um, she was often at the neighbor's house hanging out with him, and the neighbor had taken her home a couple times, so she was definitely around. I definitely saw her. And how do you know you saw her? Is it because of her hair color? Because she has a distinctive hair color. Well, her hair color was different then, but you talk to someone once you can see the facial. You know, I can, I can I've seen pictures of her in the media since then. And as soon as I saw her, I was like, "That is his girlfriend," because I already we already knew her name, and we knew her age, and it all fit. And saw, seeing a picture of her on the news, definitely, it was her. But she has since changed. I mean, her hair was not pink when she was hanging around at that house. Mary Hurt, you are the neighbor of this missing child's family, and you said you had sort of an eye line or, or right next to the home where this Jersey character, this a homeless man who did yard work, was doing yard work possibly that night for a family that was on vacation. Now, what did police do? I understand they took some footprint molds. Tell us about that. Right. Well, the, the way that the sprinklers were laid out, it made an area that was kind of muddy there, you know, dirt filled that made it into mud. So they took some footprints the next morning. Other than that, we hadn't had any other rain, so it was pretty dry everywhere else. But uh, Jersey was in so the area So you're saying that at, day. at the neighbor's, the yeah, neighbor's house that he was working at, they took footprints. What were right. Jersey's movements, to your knowledge, that day? Well, I saw him earlier in the afternoon between 12 and 1, and then um, when I got home at 9.30, the sprinklers were still on, which, and they were in the same exact spot, which is extremely odd, and then we next checked at 11, they were off. So we know or assume that he had to have been there to turn those off at 11 o'clock. Did you see him? When was the last time you saw him? About between 12 or 1 that afternoon before I left to go run some errands. Okay, so hours before, at least five hours before the mom, about five hours before the mom goes and gets wine from the store and comes back with right. a box of wine. Right. Okay, so he was in the area that day, but we don't know exactly uh, how long he was there. However, based on what you know about your neighbor who was out of town, if the sprinklers were moved, you would assume that he was there to move the sprinklers because he was the one taking care of that yard. 
Yes, that's correct. And then tell us about the dumpster and how far it's away from this house that's next to you because there was a fire, I think it was about 2.30 in the morning at, at right. that dumpster. What do you know about that dumpster? Well, that dumpster, if you walk to the top of the hill in my backyard, you can see it. Um, it's, you know, I live with a, a hill in the backyard and then it goes down the other side and there's townhomes down there and that's where that dumpster fire was. And so out of nowhere, the very night this child disappears, there's a fire in a dumpster uh, behind the house where this guy is working who just happens to be the ex-boyfriend of a woman who gets a phone call from a phone that was purportedly taken from the house at the t child, time the child's kidnapped. Boy, it's uh, very, very complicated. Uh, and there's a lot of things that don't make sense.